Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Over here on my left is JJ and he is working very hard right now on an overclock of a new AMD FX series bulldozer CPU. What we have today for you is an engineering sample. It's going to be very indicative of the actual silicon that ships uh, in the retail package. But uh, JJ is going to show us an example of just what he can do overclocking this CPU. And uh, since he's working so hard, I don't want to disturb him. But I am going to go over our uh, test bed that we have right here to show you guys the parts and components that JJ is using to set up this overclock. So here is our test bed. For starters, we're running on a Crosshair 5 Formula motherboard. That's a 990FX motherboard. And uh, for our operating system drive, we have a Corsair Force GT, 120 gigabyte serial ATA3 SSD. That uses a Sandforce SF2281 controller. We have a GTX 580 video card right there. Just running a single card right now. Uh, underneath our cooler here, and our cooler is a, a, a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Under the cooler, right down there, is our bulldozer CPU. It's an 8100 series bulldozer FX CPU. Finally, our memory. And JJ is a bala, so he has populated all four DIMM slots just to make things harder for himself. And that's Corsair XMS3 DDR3 memory and it's 1600 speed. And now we are ready to go. JJ has uh, set the bulldozer CPU here to its stock frequency of 3.1 gigahertz. And uh, JJ, take it away. What are you going to do here for the overclock? Um, we're essentially just going to be doing a little bit of a realistic uh, overclocking scenario and kind of what to expect in terms of what we can achieve on the actual uh, Crosshair 5 formula in combination with one of AMD's brand new uh, a uh, AMD FX series processors. Um, as you probably have uh, seen, there was a little bit of news, right, where the uh, the world record CPU frequency was broken, right, where ASUS and AMD now hold this in concert, um, but that was done under liquid nitrogen. So what we're trying to show here is more going to be what's going to be the frequency that a normal real-world user, once they put these two parts together, are going to be able to get. So we're essentially just going to jump here into the desktop. I've gone ahead and loaded essentially uh, defaults in terms of the actual uh, UEFI and we're going to go ahead and execute everything within the operating system. So we're going to jump into AI Suite 2. Uh, from within AI Suite 2, we're going to go ahead and make adjustments to the voltages, load light calibration, multiply, and some other parameters. So right. let's get to it. All right, so we can see here we're at the desktop. We've got CPU-Z open, uh, as well as we could also check the frequency here within AI Suite 2, but we've got an AMD FX 8100 series processor. Our core frequency in terms of its operation is uh, 3.1 gigahertz. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see what we can go ahead and overclock to. So we've got uh, the DigiPlus VRM section open within AI Suite 2, and this is pretty cool because this allows us to make real-time adjustments to the VRM, such as load line calibration, um, overcurrent protection, uh, phase switching, and a couple of other options. So we're going to go ahead and set this to ultra high, which is allow us going to keep a one-to-one -one ratio. So that means that if, let's say, we enter in 1.4 volts, um, under load, we're essentially going to be getting 1.4 volts. We're also going to go ahead and increase uh, the load line calibration option for the CPU Northbridge since we do have the memory overclocked, and as you noted earlier, we've got four DIMMs. Um, because we're going to be reaching up the frequencies as well and adding a bit more voltage, we're going to want to give ourselves a little bit more leeway in terms of the current. So we're going to go up to 120% on the OCP options. We're going to go ahead and apply those, and as I noted, no reboot has been required. Uh, since it's an ROG board, we already are running in extreme presets to get the best power delivery. So from there, we're just going to jump into straight to actually adjusting frequencies. So here we can see we've got our, our multiplier controls, got our voltages. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, essentially just take this up to uh, about 1.525. And from here, we're going to go ahead and start increasing the frequency. So uh, we'll go ahead and just jump to 4 gigahertz right off the bat. We'll apply that. This was all done real time. And uh, the benefit of now doing all this in the re OS, no rebooting is required. We can go ahead and just hit Cinebench here and uh, start running this. And as we can see, our CPU is now loading up, and we're now at 4 gigahertz. So we've already very easily gone ahead and jumped this up, and we can see overclockings working smoothly without any problems. So now that this is looking OK, we can go ahead and keep scaling a little bit further. So uh, go ahead and just let this run for a little bit, see if this looks OK. And then from there, we'll see if we can scale up. Um, we're going to probably be shooting for maybe about uh, 4.6 to maybe about 4.8. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, cancel this. And uh, we'll go ahead and keep going here. So we'll go to 4.4. 4. 
So far, so good. And uh, this is just an initial kind of performance preview. Keep in mind that we are running an engineering sample uh, CPU. And the expectation might even be a little bit more than 4.8 gigahertz um, with the MP samples. Uh, internally in our testing, we might even be seeing maybe 5 gigahertz plus on air. So we're at 4.4 now. So we'll go ahead and uh, rerun our Cinebench and see if that looks good. And we're still holding here. All right. So we're looking pretty good. So what do you say? You think 4.8? I say 4.8. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, scale this up to 4.8. As far as the 8100 processor that we have here uh, in the series of the bulldozer processors, you were saying this is actually one of the lower end that is overclockable? That's correct. Uh, in terms of the actual kind of um, CPU landscape, the FX... Um, <coughs> The FX8100 series processor is the entry-level 8-core part that supports an unlocked multiplier. So this is essentially going to be kind of like that sweet spot offering for users that are looking to get overclockability, 8 real cores, and uh, looking to you know, get uh, high-frequency support as well by taking advantage of the overclockability of the FX platform and our Crosshair 5 formula. So we've got uh, 24 multipliers set in. We're at 4.8 gigahertz. So we're going to go ahead and uh, run our uh, Cinebench again and uh, see if it holds through till the end. Okay, and we can see we're at 4.8 gigahertz. So pretty awesome in terms of uh, AI Suite 2, Turbo V Evo, the Digi Plus VRM options. We're able to do this all real time in a couple of minutes with just making some quick adjustments and uh, looking to go in terms of having an optimized and tuned UEFI. So I think pretty sweet. Very nice. Yeah. Very solid too. So we can see here that uh, Cinebench is, of course, running through. So from here, of course, you could continue to maybe tweak and tune the system, see if you could even get a little bit further. Uh, of course, continue to maybe uh, make adjustments to the voltages and other parameters and see how high you could get. The expectation, I would assume, though, for most users uh, is going to probably be somewhere in this range of about uh, 4.6 to maybe uh, 4.8 gigahertz with maybe some really good samples being able to break that 4.8 to 5 gigahertz barrier. So some pretty impressive scaling in comparison to the previous generation of X6 uh, Phenom 2 processors, which most of the time we're only hitting maybe about 4, maybe 4.2 under really ideal con uh, configurations. And just as, a, as an entry point example here, we are running, as you said, the more affordable of the FX series 8 core that are overclockable. And we're also running a fairly affordable CPU cooler here. This is a Hyper 212 Evo, uh, which is a very good cooler, but also quite affordable. So um, if you were able to run up that scale a little bit more, maybe spend a little bit more on the processor or the cooler, uh, you're definitely going to have uh, the capability as far as overclocking goes uh, to reach even beyond that. Yeah, definitely I agree. I mean, if uh, you were to strap on something like maybe one of those new uh, Corsair H80s or H100s, you know, where you you have a lot more cooling performance, you might even be able, like like you noted, to be able to get to higher frequencies. But we can see here, uh, Cinebench completed successfully, as you saw, was utilizing all the cores, 100% load, and definitely uh, the benefits of utilizing the overclocking methods uh, that the Crosshair is allowing us is that we could continue to, of course, run other stability tests real time, not having to do all these reboots and, and be able to work with that. So just a little bit of a performance performance preview. I'm sure once the actual uh, CPU launches, uh, you guys will have a whole bunch of really cool content and maybe we'll uh, uh, give you guys some other aspects in terms of helping to showcase what you guys can do on ASUS hardware. Awesome. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, once again, JJ, thank you very much for stopping by today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. I'm Paul with Newegg TV and we will see you all next time.